Good afternoon, folks. I would like to welcome you today to our online info session for the Education Assistant Diploma Program at Ashton College. I'm Adam from the Marketing and Communication team, and we have Demi in the Programs and Administration team working back end. We have Heli here today, who is a part of the EAD faculty at Ashton College, and she will be answering questions about education assistance and its career path. Heli, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for having me. All right, nice. There are lots of ways to engage with us during the session, and we love hearing your questions. On Zoom, you can use the chat feature, the question and answer feature, or the raise hand function. If you're Perfect. tuning in on Facebook Live, you can leave us a comment and we'll be able to answer your questions live during the session. If you are watching this video on YouTube, you can leave us a comment or give us a call at 604-899-0803 or our toll-free number 1-866-759-6006. Now, on to the interview. Heli, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, I, uh, one thing that I still have to wrap my head around is it's uh, 5.01 p.m. over here, but I believe uh, over there it is just a little past two. So that's one thing that I'm always thinking about when I'm talking to my uh, to my students or my, you know, colleagues uh, uh, or, you know, up and coming, uh, hopefully, uh, new EA candidates that uh, there is that time gap. But otherwise, I'm good. <laughs> I good to know here i i'm ready to to start my you know evening uh and just kind of uh hang out and and then it's a new day tomorrow so yeah all right good to know good to know so i would like to ask the first question um could you start by telling us a little bit about your career experience and education background a hundred percent. First, I want to say thank you for, for reaching out to me. I really appreciate that. Um, a little bit about me uh, is that I have my undergraduate's degree from the University of Toronto. I studied in the St. George campus, um, and it is a uh, double major that I have in environmental studies and sociology. I did that for four years, and then I worked in a couple of private colleges afterwards. Um, and I served as a student service coordinator. Afterwards, I decided to uh, jump back in and I did a postgraduate uh, certificate at uh, Humber College in behavioral science. Um, and I noticed that my calling was far more than what I thought it was. Uh, I noticed that the kids needed me um, more than I thought, and they definitely needed representation. So uh, I jumped back in and I finally finished uh, what I thought I already had, which is my teacher's college certificate or degree. Um, it's considered a bachelor's of education from uh, Niagara University. Um, I, I uh, I don't regret it. I don't regret having uh, had a seven year educational journey. Um, I think that growing up, it's always a myth to think that you know exactly what you want to do and you've got this, you know, perfect plan set out. I don't think there's anything wrong with saying, hey, I'm working as my second, like this is my second career um, and, and just kind of, you know, going with it because I I think that the advice I'd give everybody is that it's never the wrong or the right time to go to school. I think it's the best, best, best asset we could have. Um, and um, we're, we should all be so grateful that we have so many opportunities here uh, to, to embark in an educational journey at whatever time in our lives works for us. Um, I do want to add that I've been tutoring since I was 18 years old. So you do the math and figure out how old I am. Um, <laughs> Um, but education's half of who I am, honestly, um, not age-wise. That's another zinger I'm going to throw at all of you. Uh, that doesn't mean that that 18 is half of my age. Um, we can do a multiplication question to figure out using algebra, uh, to, if you'd like to know <laughs> the exact number. Um, but no, long story short, uh, like I said, I always thought that I was an educator. I just didn't have that specific title. So I had to go back and, and do the teacher's college. And here I am. I'm, you know, a permanent teacher. I've, I'm working for two boards. I have a four or five class I run, I tutor, and then I'm, I'm here as well. Uh, nicely said, Hilai. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, now, 
could you tell us what made you want to get into this field and how did you kind of start? Yeah, I think this question kind of piggybacks off the last one in that I, you know, was tutoring for, for a very long time and I was always told by my friends and, and my colleagues that, Heli, why don't you go, you talk so passionately about the kids that you serve and that you work with. Um, why don't you go and, and, you know, finally finish teacher's college and go and work in the schools as a teacher, not as a support staff or whatever else you were doing. And I said, you know, it's a passion, but there are no jobs, right? You, you, you kind of, sometimes you blindly follow the flock and that, you know, you have these memorized scripts of, you know, thinking that, okay, well, if everybody else is telling me the job market sucks, right, then it must not be very good. And unfortunately, I was one of those. Right. And up until, you know, uh, I, I decided that I wanted to, to go back in and, and dive right in and apply. I was literally, when I say I applied on a whim, I applied in June and I got accepted in July for the two year program. Uh, I knew once I knew I didn't want to wait any longer because, um, again, it's, it's just always been a calling. And once I figured out that I'm just going to stop listening to those voices telling me that the job market's not very stable, I, I jumped in and I don't regret it at all. And I always start off before I, I lecture, uh, letting my future uh, EA candidates, graduates know this exact story and that it's never too late. Um, and once you know, you, you just have to do it. And, and that voice in your head thinking, oh, there, you know, you're not going to get a job or you're quitting, in my case, a full time job to pursue extra education. It's a risk, but most of our lives are a risk, right? I think everything we do is a gamble um, and that we hope that, you know, the gamble we take, it's going to lead us to where we want to go. And the decisions we take are going to, you know, positively impact us. So. Very nice words of encouragement. I'm pretty sure everyone would uh, would take that to their hearts because now we would like to move on <clears throat> to the pro to about the program. So could mm -hmm. you tell us how is this program beneficial for students and what do you think students will enjoy or appreciate the most about it? For sure. Um, I think what's uh, most enjoyable is the fact that they get to be taught by me. <laughs> Uh, but no, uh, jokes aside, to be very honest and frank with you, I think the way that Ashton College sets up these assignments in conjunction with the real world uh, work that they're going to be doing out in the workforce is impeccable. I think that one of the benefits of, uh, of, of pursuing uh, education at a smaller school is that you get to really interact with your peers and also uh, your, your, you know, facilitator, your instructor. Um, and do real world activities that will directly uh, link up or impact your your future career path. So um, to be honest with you, to be very honest with you, I think that that is the biggest benefit of, of you know, doing the education assistant program is that the assignments matter and they're not just there because we're pushing paper and we need to get something, uh, you know, on on paper, right, to graduate you. It's, it's not that. It's very much directly linked to scenarios that you will be faced with or if not you have someone like me who's going to tell you uh, <laughs> uh, exactly what what it's like when you open the school doors if, if again you pursue uh, the education assistant path uh, journey in in a school setting versus a community center right i got i gotta i gotta also agree with you that you know the 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 the, the small closed classroom with little students. You get that nice one on one, yep. you know, especially in a program like this. Really, um, not only say that you also get the attention when you need like help with like say assignments or questions, but also like I feel that you just learn more. I feel I don't know. <laughs> uh, um, but but with that being said, uh -huh, what how how could you describe maybe what what is your teaching style like? Could you describe it? <laughs> uh -huh. My teaching style is, um, hmm, what's a great way to put it? Uh, you're putting me on the spot here. <laughs> I think my teaching style is that I, I never think that I am above anybody else, whether, uh, you know, whether I have an adult learner that's, you know, under my wings or whether I have a child or, you know, a young adult, intermediate, high school level, it doesn't matter. I never approach 
teaching in a way where I am, you know, it's, it's senior and then, you know, someone, you know, who's mentoring, sorry, mentor and mentee, if that makes sense. I approach this profession more along the lines of I'm here to build confidence. I'm here to, uh, to build relationships. Uh, I'm here to, um, instill those ready job skill um and here even you know with my fours and five grade uh grade students um you know those real life um kind of uh exposure to them so that again whatever they're studying i'm giving them a glimpse of you know this is going to be used in xyz uh so again i'm linking uh if you want to know in a nutshell i like to link whatever they're learning to to the outside world and that's very easily done uh teaching the ea program because a lot of you know my students tell me that hey he i had no idea that what i was doing already with my child uh is is actually bada bada bath theory right or this is actually part of xyz so uh, especially with a with a program like this, you do get to see those links to the real world setting, um, and you never know what you can take away or what you can give back um, in in pursuing that. But in a nutshell, I'm going to recap that my philosophy again is to connect. I, I don't see myself as a superior. I like to connect at the same level, um, and a big reason for that is that um, I think that at the end of the day, a good teacher will always. Um, will always be remembered. And I wanna be that person for someone. I, I don't care at what part of their lives they're meeting me. Um, I think there's nothing better than having a good, wholesome, um, you know, educational experience rather than, okay, this person just dictating. Uh, they just have to do what they need to do and that professor just leaves, right? And I'm sure you're nodding your head. You've had those experiences where a teacher just came and got their job done and then adios, right? Um, I don't want anyone to feel that way. So that homey, rich experience, <laughs> I think, is what my style is, is that um, I just want to be remembered in a positive way. And, and I hope that I can contribute and help out Whoever I can in my path. Right, very well said. And I think uh, you said you're not only connecting, but also uh, building confidence. I think I think just following those two is enough to make everyone um, remember I just had you. A parent, a parent just tell me that is that he's had his children during uh, it's interview week this week, parent teacher ch children led student led conference. And one of the parents just said to me that, you know what, I've had my son tell me in past that he's had teachers that were like this or that, or even just giving their two cents to their father. And he said, I don't have that issue with my daughter. I feel she's very safe and her self-esteem is, you know, constantly being worked on and she's thriving. So those are the words I want to hear. Forget about, you know, is there acquisition in X, Y, Z. Uh, acquisition will come if the confidence is there. Right. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. Uh, now, what are the career options or typical next steps for students after they graduate from this program? Excellent question. Um, I am always obviously promoting working in the school system, whether public or private. The doors are open. Uh, we need you. Um, we need you, we need you, we need you. Um, mind you, I know that there's other ways that you can get into the workforce. Uh, community living, so working as a, what would the position title be? I guess like a community living worker or coordinator. So basically what that means is there are shelters that you can work at or kind of similar to uh, what a personal support worker does, but not really, uh, kind of child youth worker or somewhere where they, you know, someone who supervises uh, during set times, um, uh, you know, the kids and, and or uh, working in retirement homes and helping out that way. So I feel an educational assistant is essentially uh, a social, you know, service worker, just like myself. I would, I would really you know, uh, humble myself and say that as an educator, I really do wear a lot of hats. And I think that I could easily translate my skills and, and go and work uh, in, a, in, a, in a shelter setting or again, in a uh elderly uh and retirement home and and contribute my services that way so i feel that that program this program sorry is so dynamic in that any sort of 
you know, human service work, if you want to call it, or community building work, you can definitely translate to. And then again, if you want the specific title, you can bring that in and, and work as just an education assistant in the schools. That's very interesting. Now, um, I would like to know, uh, I would like to like maybe put some, I don't know, some, like some grounded imagination to it. Like, could you describe like what's a typical day in the life of this job position? Like maybe let's say yours, because you said there's a lot of titles, right? So what about yeah. you know? Do you want me to explain what an education assistant does? Because I have a few that I work with, or what what a teacher does. Or maybe yeah, maybe maybe we go with that. Yeah. What's a okay. typical day in the life? Okay. So a typical day in the life of an education assistant in a school setting is they check in with their uh, special education teacher in the school uh, or superior um, lead uh, and see, you know, who they've been assigned to for the day, uh, what lunch breaks they're taking, and their schedule changes every day. Now, the beauty of that is that you never feel that you are stuck in one spot, at least in my school. Every school is different. Some schools you get assigned to one kid and you work with that one kid all day until the end of the year. Some schools like mine here, it's very dynamic in that, again, you check in with your superior, you find out who you're working with, when your lunch breaks are, when you're covering other uh, uh, coworkers' lunch breaks, and et cetera, et cetera. The reason they do that is because, as you're aware, there are rampant viruses going around. And in addition to that, kids are like sponges. They attract a lot of germs. Regardless of this new virus, they're always getting sick. So because of that, they wanna make sure that that individual, that education assistant is productive in that if they're working with one individual, if that individual isn't there, what's option B, what's option C? So there, there's a rhythm to the, to the what is it? There's a, there's a method to the madness is what I say. So that's what happens, okay? Um, and then once you've checked in, you are then doing what you need to do. So for some, uh, your day may look like you are toileting, you are, um, you are, what else? You are taking them out for walks, you are sitting in the classroom and providing them with different uh, medians of work. So whether that's through an iPad, you have a language or math program you're putting on for them and that you're monitoring them on and helping and assisting them on, or you're sitting in, in the class, uh, mainstream inclusive environment uh, lecture or discussion and that you are sitting and assisting them as the teacher goes to the to the board and explains and you're kind of helping that teacher um, to differentiate the work for that child so what that basically means is that you are then sitting with that you know individual and saying okay so this is what I think you're being taught this is what your teacher's given me what can we do to make this simplistic and more easy for you uh, to follow because they would know who that individual is or if they don't i always encourage my students to ask 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 away a teacher loves we get asked questions anyways just ask one more um better than just doing random stuff right hey this is what i think i've been assigned to i've never worked with this kid before this kind of looks a little tricky or hey is this at their level this is what everybody else is doing is this what we should be doing? Or if you know, you're new to working with that individual, hey, can you show me what they've worked on before? And then you're going from there. Um, so for some, it looks like more, um, what else? Ba, ba, ba. Well, to be honest, it depends on what the teacher's doing, right? It depends on what's being taught in that specific period. Uh, for some, it's it's a lot of just, you know, the walks and the wagon rides and the bicycle rides. And if there's more of a, you know, um, um, an impairment in, in, in which case that you are responsible for getting them mobile and moving them around, then that's a different case. But again, there's some where it's just an LD, a learning disability they have, and that you're just kind of providing an extra set of hands and just more assistance uh, in an educational manner. Um, one thing I will say, and I always tell my students this, is that uh, you're always putting on fires in this job, if you want to know in a nutshell. Teachers, we do it in a different way, uh, but we definitely need our sidekick. We need, you know, and, and I, I have a very strong working relationship with any EA that walks into my room. Uh, I don't feel like they should feel, I'm going to repeat that word, I don't want them to feel that they are an extra set of hands. I want them to feel like they're included in my room and that we need them as much as uh, they need us. Um, I always want an, you know, uh, educational assistant who's working again 
and they could just be there for an hour. I don't know. It changes, but I always want them to feel like they're contributing to the classroom uh, environment um, and that their opinion, and, and I will ask them, I'll check in with them. Hey, how did it go? Right. Do you need anything? And I think that having that supportive collaborative um, uh, relationship is key and one way that you can build that especially if you're new to the environment you're new to working with um, different individuals is through uh, being more open and kind of you know sometimes take the initiative in, in approaching the teacher uh, or whoever your superior is and say hey these are some notes I just got from the half hour I work with them can I provide you know, can I give them to you? And maybe that just means you were scribing. Maybe that means you took two or three anecdotal notes on how well they did on set question or if they were stumbling on it. And it goes a long way. I have uh, portfolios for each and every child that I teach. And I add those little snippets in uh, that any extra, you know, teacher or, or educator has provided me with. So it, it is like I said, if it's not already there, if the inviting environment isn't there, you can create it by, you know, opening yourself up to, to being more um, approachable. And, and maybe that just means that that teacher will notice that and then hopefully work with you. But I think it's better that you start it if it's not already there, because it's very much appreciated when there's collaboration happening. Well, very informative, very, very insightful. Um, it seems here that we do have a Facebook question and it says, what was your favorite or most interesting part about working in this industry? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, it changes, honestly, because I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I have a lot of memorable moments. Uh, it changes uh, every uh, year because it depends on who I'm working with during the year and who I'm serving. Because um, uh, I do feel that that is how I approach this job is I'm serving the community or, or the class that I teach. But um, I'll give you an easy one off the top of my head because there's so many that I can remember the most recent. Um, we were doing uh, students, we were pre providing, sorry, preparing for our student led conferences, and they had to do a self check in sheet, uh, self uh, evaluation on themselves, obviously. <laughs> and um, one of the questions was, what can Miss Timor do to, that's my last name, uh, to support you? And she, one of the girls, she put her hands on her hips and she looked at me and tilted her head to the side and said, Miss Timor, you do so much. I don't know how much more you can do. And it was like in this weird, angry manner. And I was like, oh my, right? And that's the same girl that came in this year who apparently was big behavior last year, who, you know, was caught doing X, Y, Z. I'm not gonna go into it, but long story short in my class, that is who she is, right? Right. So, the, and if it was from anybody else's mouth, I'd be like, meh, but that's her. That is who I see in my, in, in my head. And when I see her, that is who I envision. I don't know who this other girl was that they, that I was told about. And I had another student say the same thing, Miss Timor, you do so much. I don't know what else you could do. And she just shrugged her shoulders and smiled. And, and, you know, it's just, it's very humbling <laughs> and, it makes me very happy. So that is a moment I can share off the top of my head. There's so many more. It's a very, very nice moment. Thank you for sharing. Um, what advice would you give to students who are brand new to the industry or changing careers from something very, very different? Um, one advice I'd give you is that, um, unfortunately, when you're new, sometimes you might feel like, you can't ask questions or you feel like anyone that has like two or three months or one year or any sort of more experience than you do is your superior well i'm here to tell you they're not don't listen to it and this is advice i wish someone would give me um don't listen to anybody other than your boss so find out who that is connect with them and anybody else that comes in your path you you know you give them an answer with a smile and and you let them know thank you that's very nice thanks for sharing your opinion if i have a question i'll approach you 
I know what I'm doing. Thanks. Right. And I think that that keeps that like micromanaging uh, part out of it because I feel that especially as a newcomer EA, you're going to have counterparts that have this much experience and this much, and they've known the school and they know this community center and, you know, they just want to come and they just want to try to confuse you. I'm here to tell you, don't listen to them with a kind and polite smile. Let them know, Hey, thank you. But if I have a question, I'll ask you, or I have someone to report to. I have, you know, a, this is this manager. And, and sometimes you don't even have to say that, just kind of nodding your head saying thank you is enough. And then if it, you know, progresses and that you're being watched, quote unquote, and that your work is being judged or, you know, debated upon, then, you know, please don't hesitate to have those private conversations with your superior. Because sometimes it's, it, there's a slew of reasons. Oh, I think my light's turned off. That is creepy. Uh, it's... Uh, sensitive here so I got to turn it back on but <laughs> just in the classroom I think I have to wave or something there we go um <laughs> uh I got scared there I said oh is the school trying to tell me to leave um but just believe in yourself and like I said that's all you got to do uh, that's that's a really nice grounded advice attendees please take, take note of that that sounds really important and it is important, I think. Yeah. Yep. Um, and I feel like anyone can relate to that. It's not just me in this field, right? Right. I, I, I think easily, I think that is very universal, but I may, I think more so, um, more so, um, what's that word? More so enhanced, highlighted in this field, I would say, um, you know, I, I would think so. Mm -hmm. um, so what qualities or characteristics make people best suited? for this career path? Um, I think being compassionate, uh, caring, which again, two synonyms of the same thing. Um, honestly, in a nutshell, wanting to be there and wanting to serve and help. This job is all about aiding and helping and it's, it's human service work, right? Social service work. In a nutshell, that's what you're doing. You're serving your community, which you know, could be children, could be, you know, infants, could be uh, young adults, could be uh, seniors. It, it depends on what niche you end up working with, but you have to want to be there. The pay is not going to motivate you. What's going to motivate you more than that is you're wanting to help and, and put a smile on someone's face. All right. Well, thank you so much for answering that. Um, now, I want to actually open up the floor to any questions. Feel free to raise your hands uh, or drop your questions in the chat. Does anyone like to? <laughs> well, well, for now, we, oh, we have one uh, from Facebook. What level of education, training, certifications, or licenses are required for entry into this kind of work? Uh, okay. yeah <laughs> so so what kind of education is needed for this work yes yeah, sorry what level of education training certifications or licenses are required for entry oh uh, well you have to complete an education assistant diploma program you need the diploma and then you if i'm not mistaken become part of the the board like it's some sort of a designation that you receive if i'm not mistaken are there, is there a website or anything to get this designation or is, is it just these two things um, only? Yeah, you just need to complete the full diploma program, do the full practicum, everything that comes with it. And then you're, again, uh, <coughs> part of that. Mm. So then, you know, you're given that designation and that's all you need to do. There's no extra tests or quizzes or uh, anything you have to do to follow up. All right. Good to know. Um, Oh, okay. Uh, they, okay, we have one question from uh, uh, Sand here, Singh. I, sorry if I'm, if I'm butchering that. Uh, what are the requirements to entry to this program? Requirements of entry. Oh, okay, okay. Um, if I'm not mistaken, you have to... Ba -ba -ba. Um, I think from my understanding, you have to be an under mature adult or um, you have to have a certain level of TESOL. Uh, 
done. Uh, so your English language qualification has to be above a certain level. And if you need more information on that, I think Demi might be a great person to go to because um, I have specific information here about uh, what courses you need to complete before entering the practicum, but I don't off the top of my head remember the prerequisites uh, other than the English um, or the mature adult status. So some sort of a high school qualification there, or if you don't have it, then the mature adult test that you have to complete. And then in addition to that, your English uh, level has to be above a certain number. And again, Demi is a great person to go to for that. Yeah, just to add on to that, I think you answered that perfectly. Um, we do have the admission requirements posted on our webpage. So if you go to our webpage, you will be able to see all the requirements. And I also do see there was another question saying, I am in Canada, Vancouver, BC. Can I do this program? So yes, we do offer programs both online and in class. So you can choose whether you want to do it online or in class. Um, and because it's online, so anyone across Canada, even internationally, you can participate in this program as well. Um, Adam, back to you. All right. Well, there is a. Uh... Oh, Noreen, if you want to know how to pay, I think you should. Uh, there is a. There is a. Um email that you can send to us, our program specialist, uh, Demi, could you send that uh, link? Uh, or actually, no, maybe you could check that in our... Um, yeah, our webpage website. actually has like an apply now. So if you click on that apply now, it will take you to all the registration and you can do the paying there. Yeah. Hope that is, I hope that answers your question. Or... Oh, well, she yeah. sent her email, so... I, will, I can definitely send you more information to your email. All right. And there is, okay, there's one more question here in, uh, from Facebook. Uh, in what ways do you think the practicum will help students prepare for the job once they graduate from the program? And the practicum is basically you doing the job, if you want to know. It's exactly that. You are doing the job. Um, <clears throat> so you're working with your practicum supervisor to help land uh, that practicum. You're giving them, you know, some ideas of where you live and what works for you, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then they find you what works best and is well suited. Uh, and you are doing that job. You're observing and, and you're getting to take part in, you know, working with that child or set children, if you're in the school setting and, and other settings, I'm not quite sure about, but you're, you're taking part in doing that work. Um, and the only difference is you're not doing it alone. You're just having somebody who's, you know, coaching and mentoring you through it. <clears throat> oh, so it's kind of like a send straight with no training wheels kind of thing. You're just like right there. Right. Well, this job is like that, right? There's no set manual for it. And I always tell people that there's no manual that you can read like some other work places have where, you know, you come in and, you, you know, you send, send your email and then you do this and then, you, you know, you got to check in and have a meeting here. And no, this job is not like that. You are not sitting. You are constantly rotating around and every scenario, every situation, every day is different. That's good. It's really good to know. Uh, Oh, uh, another volunteering work. That's a very specific question, Noreen. Um, I'm not quite sure about that. Um, I know, again, because this is a licensed program, you're going to have to double check with Demi and then maybe uh, Demi can give you some more information about that. Yeah, I will have our program specialist, specialist email you all the information. But from what I know, volunteer work won't count as practicum. Um, Even if someone monitors you, she's saying. We, we have like a, an employee designated for practicum um, issue, so we can definitely check in with her to see if volunteer work can count as practicum. But I know usually what happens is we will match you with an employer. Is it Suzanne still? Suzanne is a program director. So Pruva is actually our um, student success coordinator, so she deals with all the practicum. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, we can definitely find something that's close to you. Um, we when do- Noreen. Sorry? It's been a problem. I was just saying to Noreen, it's never been a problem. So I'm yeah. sure she'll. Yeah. All right. And I think we're very close to the end, uh, actually, unless there are any more like non program specific questions. <clears throat> or maybe something more towards the EAD field, maybe. If not, um, then we could. All right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Okay. If nothing else. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. 
um, Hilai. Uh, this has been very insightful, uh, and I love taking the opportunity to have a conversation with someone that is so experienced in the field. Uh, thank you. And I think new students will actually be very, very lucky to have you as their teacher. To find out more information, you can find all of the links in the description, <clears throat> or check out our website to read all about the program information or learn about the registration process. Thank you for joining us and have a great rest of your day. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.